Good afternoon. We are in Bellingham, Washington. Going to the ocean front. Well, I guess it's more of the harbor piece of sound, I think. Pick up some hardwood to take to Denver, Colorado. Twenty nine twenty five. We want twenty nine twenty nine. I almost came down that way and the sign says no trucks. Oh, maybe I better pull over here. I don't know exactly where I'm supposed to go. I can go in on foot. I don't want to get ahead of this guy if he's supposed to be there next. There's the water right in front of us. Let's go see what we got going on here. Let me repark. Get my trailer closer to the side of the highway. That looks like there's a dock right here to the left of me for drive-ins. Yeah, he's calling me in. Okay. My appointment was for 5 o'clock and it is 3.30. Yeah. Going to load to Denver? Go ahead and put it in. What is this guy doing? Go ahead. I thought he didn't think he knew what he was doing there. There's the bay right there. Get these doors opened. They're looking up some numbers, so I'll find some numbers. And hopefully we all match up. That's what we're looking for. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, we are loaded. with a multi-million dollar load of plywood. 
Taking her back to Denver. There's the cruise ships. The cargo cruise ships. Green Sea, the orange stream. I don't know what that ship does. Anyway, it's got eight cranes on it. We have two minutes left of our three window, a three hour window. And we start losing drive time. But we get five hours and 54 minutes of drive time. Ship. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. That didn't take long. <laughs> So I'll we'll get back on the five, head south, and then I guess we'll go up over what? Snoqualmie Pass. Head back to Denbar. Well, that's why you put your blinker on beforehand. More off.
tsunami evacuation route. Wally Cum Park. S Q U A L I C U M. Squally Cum. Okay, so we have no more of our drive time I mean our three hour window is gone but we do have five hours over five and a half hours to truck so we'll be in Denver we're probably 21 hours maybe 20 20, 21 hours away. So we'll be in Denver come Wednesday afternoon. I think so. To the five. Take us to the five. Welcome to Snoqualmie Pass. Those trucks right there, there was a accident or something up here earlier. It was pretty much purple on top of this pass. Those guys probably uh, had their clocks violate. I don't care, they should not park on the highway. I'll take a violation then sit on the highway. Even if it's legal to park like that, which they probably are okay, because they're off a bit. I just don't want to be asleep and then have somebody who's drunk or falling asleep crash into me. Well, I'm sleeping, and then I got to deal with the fact that they died because they crashed into me. Now I get the microscope, and this must have been what the accident was. Yeah, slow down, everybody. Thank you for letting me through. Rico's flying around the corner. That's what this guy was doing. Flying around the corner. Don't drive a truck if you don't know how. Get hurt. That guy was there was nice. He uh He slowed everybody down, they would come flying up, and he put his flashes on and hit the brakes pretty hard and stopped everybody. Sixty-five balmy degrees up here. Nice, nice, nice.
So we were, uh, after we got loaded, uh, that, that, you know that flatbed that was there, we came up behind. He was in front of me, and he, he had been there since Friday. Not there, he went to a truck stop. But he... Um, me and him were talking, because he's a flatbed, he was... had to wait for another truck to get out of there that we saw earlier. I don't know if you saw it in the camera or not, but there was another flatbed being loaded. That guy called me into the dock right away because the rear load, well, the dry van, um, loads differently, of course, than being from the side. So they had that opening and stuck me right in there. But I felt kind of bad because I got loaded before he did. Now, water's gone down quite a bit. I haven't seen it down this low. I don't know if I if I come back out in late summer anyway up to this area. I'd say it's down about maybe 15 foot, 10 to 15 foot. But anyway, we got out of there, and then I scaled out. A, you had to go to the left and go back around the building. That's what we were going around. We saw the orange, I can't remember the name of that ship. But anyway, there was a little scale just around the corner of that building. We, we scaled out just right. So we're probably 70 A 78.5 I think we we're grossed out at left there and then right off the bat we hit a scale like on the highway scale the ones that arrest you or ticket you and fine you if you're overweight and stuff like that we got called into that went over that nice and easy left right away Been getting a lot of rain from uh, Bellingham to here. There's been a lot. It's been been uh, 50 percent of the time we got rain, which is nice. And they need it. They usually get it. So my intermittent wipers off the wrong way. I had to turn them up. The wonky setting. The wonky wiper setting. So we got about three hours left to drive tonight. I slept pretty good last night, but a couple nights before, not so much. I'm tired now, but I think there's no need to uh, do the three hour finish. If, uh, if I can't hang, I'll just pull over because I think this probably delivers on Thursday.
more likely because they wouldn't load me up and then barely give me enough time to make it. Animal Crossing. They call it Wildlife Crossing. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. If I if I can hang, I'll drive the full three hours. If not, I'll just pull it over. Like I said, there's no big rush. But the way I drive, more than likely, we'll just knock out the three hours. Maybe I'll put a movie in and take a nap. Before you know it, the three hours will be done. <laughs> We don't do that. We end up like that truck that back there behind us. No, thank you. We'll kind of figure out the math as far as how far three hours will take us and then kind of get a heads up about where we'll spend the night tonight because if it three hours puts me in a, a spot that is tough parking in other words slim to none then I'll shut down in an earlier area with more parking. More likely it would be a rest area. If I don't know yet, I'll have to do some math and think about it. Take a look, see at Google Maps. Pull over to the next rest area, use the restroom, and see how far we can go. I'll see you in a bit. So we just left the rest area, Indian John Hill. It's like a mile marker 89. See the smoke right there? The only bummer about uh, going back west or east to Denver is going back into the smoke. Look how thick that is. Must be close fire. We can almost make to the bottom of the hill, um, Cabbage Hill. Like somebody blew a radiator line. Well, 
we have two hours and 40 minutes left. And it's about three hours or 2.55. So we'd be about 15 minutes short to make that casino. So probably looking at around Umatilla. Stanfield, I think it's Stanfield, to park it for the night. I'll have to look to see if it'll be a rest area or not. Where this fire is, that's quite a bit of smoke. So we went to Portland and then came up from Portland to Seattle. And we're going back this way. You can just see this coming in, but we get it going out. Some of you watched that video, I'll just say this real quick, I think I said it in another video too. Um, it looks like the camera caught that red light, but I swear, I didn't see it. I was looking right at it, 
I see red lights all the time on all these stuff for them. Somebody mentioned maybe because the shroud was the one that over the lenses, maybe that's why. I don't know. It was really weird though. I mean, how can you not see red lights? They're, that's why they're red. But I was looking right at them and I didn't see them. I don't know what the deal is. The camera saw them. I noticed that when I was editing. I put it up there anyway. But anyway, um, that happens. So uh, I've never had that happen. That personally seen a red light that was little red and not see it. video with 